Welcome to Trust Talk. Our guest today is Margareta Sutemann Reinen, a businesswoman from the Netherlands and former chair of the executive board of Aeon Holdings, who shares her journey and passion for supporting women in leadership. Trust is crucial in her career and the insurance industry. She highlights the role of trust in relationships and women's leadership. The interview also touches on a study showing women's resilience in regaining trust. Margareta emphasizes the importance of a trust but verify approach when balancing trust, empathy, and sound business decisions. Building trust with underrepresented groups requires fostering inclusivity. Trust plays a vital role in providing risk and insurance solutions. The conversation also addresses the significance of independent investigations to maintain trust. Margareta offers advice to aspiring young women leaders, emphasizing continuous learning, asking questions, visibility, and self-belief. Your host today, Severin DeWitt. Marguerite, welcome to Trust Talk. Could you share with me how you got to your current positions? And also, I noticed that you have been involved in various professional activities related to women's leadership. Would it be correct to assume that you have a particular interest in supporting and encouraging women to take on leadership roles in business? Uh, yes, thank you. It's a pleasure, first and foremost, to be here with you today, Severin. Yes, how did I get to the positions where I am into is by working hard. Uh, maybe that's the first answer, but also by perseverance and by putting points at the horizon where I would like to aim at and where I would like to go. And one of those points indeed was women's empowerment. And from an early age, I noticed, especially in the insurance industry where I came from, that it was very male dominated. So I was curious and intrigued, how could we get more women to the executive positions? It's taken me a long time to actually succeed in that because we now see lo lots of women in positions. And the particular interest why I think this is important is because I've had my own journey to where I am now, but it's important to allow other women to stand on our shoulders so that they actually quicker than I did can get to their points at their horizons. As a female leader in the business world, how important has trust been in your career success and the success of the organizations you have led? Extremely important because I started in reinsurance in 1919 after my law degree. And reinsurance is a business, it's insurance of insurers. And it's based on ultimate good faith. So there are only a few reinsurers, as you may know, it's Swiss Re and Munich Re are the largest. And those reinsurance company actually take over full portfolios of insurers with a deductible. So an insurance company only has 10 million deductible or maybe 50 if they're larger. And the reinsurance companies take over all the risk accordingly. Ultimate good faith is the principle based on which they do so. So they don't know all the details. They don't do the underwriting of the original risks, but they trust the insurance companies to do their jobs as appropriate as they could do and take on that risk. And that element has been instrumental in my whole career because if you're being raised with an element like that, why is it so practical? I actually started working in uh, reinsurance in 1990 after the storms. So we had the winter storms, Daria, Vivian, Wiebke, uh, and they caused incredible losses in the Netherlands. And there were some insurance companies who only started as per the 1st of Jan 1990. And what was the situation? There wasn't even a formal contract in place and the storms occurred. So they had, as a gentleman's agreement, agreed to have a reinsurance cover in place, but the storms hit. And so reinsurers paid out based on ultimate good faith, millions. And I was hired as per the 1st of April, exactly 33 years ago on Saturday, to start writing the contracts, which you know was just for the sake of having a contract, a contract, but the, the millions were already paid out. So ultimate good faith has been instrumental, yes. Given your active advocacy for women's rights and achievements, I would like to center this interview on the distinctive significance of trust for women or trust of women, both in terms of its relevance to women and its emanation from women. Yeah, I look forward to the questions. <laughs> Uh, during your interview with the Inspiring Women Leaders series, hosted by uh, Rise and Lead Women, you touched upon your leadership style and emphasized 
the importance of building trust. Could you elaborate on what building trust entails? Yeah, so I think if I recall this interview, I talked about the lessons learned from my Harvard Business School professor, Frances Fry. And she told me that trust is based on a triangle of logic, empathy, and authenticity. And logic, of course, implies that you know what you're talking about. Competence. Yeah, it's competence, but also that you indeed, uh, you know, are you willing to learn? If those elements, you know, which are important, are you still willing to learn? Empathy is about, are you able to position yourself in someone else? You can also translate it compassion. And authenticity is, are you your true self? And if you're not your true self, you actually leave something at the door, I always say. So it's important to have, be your true self. And you asked me the leadership style. I think it's extremely important to, if you build relationships, that first and foremost, one, that you know what you're talking about. Two, that you have the confidence which is also based again, of course, on authenticity, but also knowing about what you're talking about. And three, you know, empathy, being able to place yourself in somebody else's shoes so that you are able to proactively or reactively do the right, give the right reactions, I think are extremely important. I would like to discuss the findings of a noteworthy 2014 study conducted by a group of American social psychologists. The study produced two intriguing conclusions which I would like to share with you. Firstly, women are less prone to losing trust as compared with to men in the aftermath of a trust violation. And secondly, women are more likely than men to regain trust even after repeated transgressions. Yeah, so I, I wasn't aware of this study. I think it's really interesting. My first reaction would be, first and foremost, I think a lot of women are optimists and no pessimists. So optimist is seeing in every difficulty an opportunity. The second reaction is, Women are extremely relationship driven. Uh, when something goes wrong, they will keep on having faith and uh, maybe a little bit longer than men. And if you then need to restart a relationship after you have lo lost trust and at some moment you, know, you need to be the optimist again to go forward. And collaboration back to why this is important because if you take a look at leadership and masculine and feminine leadership skills, collaboration is, is one of the main feminine elements. And I think that plays a role, that we know that you can't do things by yourself, you need a team to get things going. But there's a but to this. Uh, if I personally, I make this personally, if I have lost trust in someone and I regain trust, that you know, I won't forget what happened. So the question for this survey is, was this the first time something happened or the second? Because if the second time something happens, I might may, maybe be even more, a little bit more stricter than man. If I've lost my trust for the second time, then maybe there is... Trust, but don't forget. Yeah, yeah. As a female entrepreneur, how do you navigate the balance between displaying trust and empathy, like you just mentioned, in negotiations, for example, while also ensuring that you are making sound business decisions and protecting your interests? Yeah, so I've learned to trust but verify, which is a quote of Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett always also said, I like this one, uh, as soon as the tide comes out, you, you can see who's been swimming naked. So seriously looking at trust but verify, making sure that you put all the facts together as many as you can, based on which you actually provide a meaning and then form an opinion. For me, it's always been about, uh, we already mentioned competence, but it's about having a nice balance between competence and confidence in this respect whereby also you have some realistic yeah, self-awareness and self-reflection. You know, I always say I strive for perfection, but I settle for excellence. Uh, and think back to trust in relationships or, in, yeah, I've always looked at long-term relationships, which is interesting to know today in this world where a lot of people, especially young people, move jobs every two years. I've been with one company for 33 years and it's proven to be very successful because, you know, you, you have the ups and the downs. That's something which belongs together, like a heartbeat ups and downs. You are the chair of the advisory board of SER Topvrouwen, which focuses on promoting diversity and female empowerment in the C-suite. How does trust play a role in creating more inclusive and diverse workplaces and what steps can organizations take to build trust with underrepresented groups? Now this is extremely important. I think first and foremost, if you look at high performing teams, mutual trust is one of the key elements of having a high-performing teams. And that, of course, drives results and drives growth. 
Other elements of high-performing teams are good communications, you know, internal support, clear goals, effective leadership, negotiation skills, etc. But what's really important is that back to the internal support, if you have a team, you need to make sure that you ha actually not only have a diverse team in respect of gender or generations or bicultural or disabilities, but you need to have a team which represents diversity of trust and opinion. And if you provide trust as a leader to your team, they will be able to give you that diversity of thought and opinion and that allows you to have effective and balanced decision making. So it's really important to make sure that trust is a key element of how you relate and that mutual trust is built. And you know, as Doc Conan said, uh, Severin, uh, you can only uh, be successful in the marketplace if you're successful in the workplace first. So it's of key essential importance that you uh, build an inclusive and belonging culture in your organization. In the intro uh, it was mentioned that you are a former chairman of the executive board of Aeon Holdings and member of the executive committee of Aeon InPoint. Aeon uh, Holdings is a leading global professional services firm that provides a broad range of risk as you just explained, uh, retirement and health solutions. So how does the company prioritize building and maintaining trust with its client in a constantly changing business environment? Yeah, I think that what you see at the moment changes upon us. It's a new reality that uncertainty is a reality. That's one. All our clients, whether it's private or commercial consumers, are navigating the volatilities of dealing with all the changes in the world. They uh, are dealing with uh, a lot of change, but also a lot of speed, uh, acceleration, and last but not least, you know, transparency. We all know that the walls of concrete have become walls of glass. And as Aeon, what we've been doing, and I'm now, of course, I'm leaving the company, is that for, you know, we are ensuring that all of those clients, private or commercial, can do their business. So we help them to mitigate risk and help them to mitigate the uncertainties which cross their path. And to do this in a, in a matter which is built, the trust you asked me about, is really the most important element because they need to be as certain that once something happens, the house burns down or the company is struck by a disaster or an earthquake happens, that payment follows based on which they can continue doing business. So trust is an important element, you know, in case of a catastrophe, that there is someone who is making sure that you can continue. I have a question that came up just uh, because of recent news about a report on a potential sexually transgressive behavior in a TV show from a producer ITV. In the Netherlands we have a, a government commissioner on sexually transgressive behavior, she's called yeah. Mariette Hamer. In a comment on the report that was made by an attorney's firm in Amsterdam, she commented that she understands that women who initially reported to the law firm did not want to be interviewed. They said, we don't trust it. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. Now, yeah, what you see is that, um, of course, this law firm was asked to provide their opinion and they were requested to do this research, this, this survey and this, this report by the broadcasting firm, which was producing the TV show The Voice of the Netherlands and The Voice of Holland. And uh, I'm not sure how to say this in English, but who pays determines is what we call it in the Netherlands. So, of course, it might raise questions when you're going to discuss your situation uh, with the law firm, which has been appointed by the owner of the show. I think this raises the question here is like, when is a report independent? When is a survey independent and how does it convey? Now, yeah, for me, you would imagine that law firms just like doctors do the best as they can in order to provide uh, their opinion. But of course, some of the situations, if the broadcasting company pays, might have been taken out or might have been written in a certain manner which might not translate into the real facts. I conclude most of my interviews with the same question. I also want to ask it to you. What advice would you give to young women who are aspiring to leadership roles in the business world, particularly in industries where women are still underrepresented? How can they build trust and overcome any obstacles they may face along the way? Now, it's first and foremost to know what you're talking about, so to continue to learn. I always said, if you're the smartest in the room, you're in the wrong room. So please make sure that you continue to learn. Also, make sure that if you don't know, simply say, I don't know, and investigate what you don't know. Ask questions. There are many ways to ask questions. You can integrally ask questions, which is how is finance doing, how is HR, but also disruptive. If somebody says A, why don't you say Z, just to trigger a reaction. 
You can ask hopeful questions, which is always uh, empathic, but you can also ask personal questions and ethical questions. If you know what you're doing, if you know what you're talking about, people will note you, but also be aware that also it's important, and that's the advice I'm giving, you know, make yourself visible. Don't think that if you do something well that other people might see. Sometimes people won't see because they simply, the light doesn't shine on you. Eh? And so it's important if you want the light to be shine on you, that you make sure that you also create that yourself. And the best advice I can give is to be bold, brave and brilliant, I always say. Just go and do it. And believe in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Marguerite, thank you very much for being available to uh, Trust Talk. It was uh, really interesting to talk with you about a subject that we haven't covered in the past. I, I am assuming that you won't be stopping doing uh, the work that you have been doing now you have uh, retired from AOM. So what are your next plans? First and foremost, you know, it's been uh, 33 years working full time has been seriously fun and uh, also a challenge. I'm doing a lot of non-executive roles, as you know, and I'm very active on women empowerment also internationally with the G20. That's really nice because you meet a lot of interesting people who are really intriguing. We also have different opinions, eh? and that's, I think that's what I like. I like to surround myself with people with different opinions and different perspectives because it enriches my life. And it makes me also wonder, why do I think what I think, and why does someone else think what he or she thinks? So my next steps will be to take a look, what am I doing, what am I going to do? I don't know yet, to be honest. So it's the verwondering, you know, how to get uh, surprised again. It's something which I will see and will take a look. And I can tell you one thing. Everybody who knows me will uh, knows for sure I'm not going to be sitting here <laughs> home alone. I thought so. Thank you very much. All the best with that. Uh, good health and uh, uh, lots of success with whatever you're going to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zeven. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Trust Talk. We hope that you found the conversation valuable and informative. At Trust Talk, we believe in the power of trust to create positive change in the world. If you believe in our mission, we would greatly appreciate your support. You can help keep Trust Talk going by making a donation on our website at trusttalk.co slash donate. Every contribution, no matter how small, helps us to continue bringing you thoughtful and engaging podcasts. Thank you for your support and for listening to Trust Talk. We look forward to meeting you again for future episodes. Thank you.